Islam in the front right here. I feel like it's been a long time since we've been talking about you possibly getting a lightweight title shot, but now the week is here. I'm wondering what are the emotions now that you're less than a week away from challenging for your first UFC title? Uh, honestly, I'm so excited because all my life I'm waiting for that moment, and now I'm very close and I'm ready. I'm curious if you still consider Charles the lightweight champion, the reigning one, even though he was stripped of his title. We've talked to a lot of lightweights since then, and they still view Charles as the champion, even though he doesn't have the belt. He's a champion, but he has to show all, all fighters good example because, you know, he has to be professional, and I hope he's going to make weight that time. And we saw the clip of you entering the hotel and walking past him when he was sitting in the lounge. Have you had any interactions with him or his team at the hotel? No, honestly, I don't saw him because all these team have uh, white hair. That's why I don't know who is a Charles. And then looking at his, his style of fighting, it seems a lot of his submission wins have been defensive where his opponents have shot in for a takedown or they've made a mistake and he's capitalized. I'm curious how you would break down his grappling and his defensive grappling compared to past opponents. This is my goal, finish him in the ground because I have to show all people my grappling level. And how would you compare your striking to his? He's obviously been, he, he clipped Gaethje and he's, he's clipped Poirier and stuff, but he's obviously known as a grappler. Uh, this is MMA fight. We're going to beginning from the stand-up and I'm going to check his skills there, you know. All my opponents, they good, like, for example, like Drew Dober, all, all of these guys, if I'm going to stay with them, it's they can make me some trouble, you know, but I just have to do where I good, where like close the distance, hold them, take them down, you know. If I let him work, he gonna do many stuff. Then finally, uh, what do you make of Alex Volkanovski weighing in as a backup? Even your coach Javier said that he would want you to fight him next, even if, if you do win against Charles. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm, I meet uh, Olkanovsky in the downstairs. He's a like, short guy. I ask him, hey, why you need this? He's a cut weight right now. But if I beat Volkanovsky, you know, people are going to say, but people always talk some. But I want to fight for the Charles, and I hope he's going to make weight. But doesn't matter, you know, because... This camp, I training so hard, doesn't matter who is going to be there. But Saturday night, I need someone. Islam, what do you think about Charles leading into this fight? Sometimes he seems a little bit angry that he's fighting you and a bit emotional. Do you think that he's annoyed that he's fighting you this Saturday? Uh, I just have to know, respect his skills, striking, grappling, and... I don't think about his emotional. I just focus on me, you know. I just have to cut weight and uh, be ready every way, you know. Do you believe outside of yourself he's the best lightweight or do you see other people like Benil or Gamrot as potentially the best in the world? Right now he's a champion. Right now he's a best lightweight. I don't think he's best. Right now I know this is my moment and I believe even right now I'm best lightweight in the world. Islam, you are the least hit fighter in UFC history. You only absorb about you know 0. 0.89 strikes a minute. Do you think people don't give you enough respect for your defense? Uh, I think now they have to give respect because I want to, after the MMA professional career, good life. That's why I choose the good way, you know, when I fight. Yeah, is that something you're, you're aware of in there? Like you're not wanting to take damage or do you think Because it's just nobody not? can stop my wrestling, that's why. Do you think we're going to see that pretty early on in this fight with Charles, how dominant your wrestling is? I'm going to do my job, you know. I'm going to do the same things, always. Take them down, hold them, make them tired, and finish. And there's been a lot of uh, you know strong comments from your camp this week and the weeks leading up from Javier, from Habib, 
Charles's team says it's putting too much pressure on you going into this fight. Are you feeling some of the pressure of these expectations and all the, the talk to hype you up? No, my team don't have pressure. I don't have pressure. I think his, his team have some pressure because he have a big team, I have a big team, and uh, already we beat two guys from his team. Islam Mamedov fight with some of guys from his team, and Tagir Ulanbekov beat some of from his team. And, and Saturday night it's going to be 3 0. And you uh, got asked about Volkanovski. Uh, Dana White said that he's going to fight the winner of this, and there's an event in Perth in February in Australia. Would you be interested in fighting Alex there? What are you looking at for like the timeline? Because I know there's Ramadan coming up. Like, how, when do you think you're going to fight again after this? It's going to be before Ramadan. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a good fight. No, but always when the champion from other division they fight with other champion, it's big big fight and very interesting fight for the old fans so you wouldn't mind going to australia to fight alex there why not yes i went to australia one time we can go again thank you islam islam alaikum um islam do you feel charles is the biggest challenge in this division for you and if you don't think it's him who do you think it is Biggest challenge, you know, we have many guys right now, like young generation who have good skills in the in the top ten, like for example, uh, Gamrod, Binil, this, and uh, Fiziev. We have many you know, tough and top guys. And I know you got married last year. And after listening to your podcast with Megan Levy, I learned that you have a nine-month-old daughter now as well. Um, I was ten. Oh, ten months now, sorry. Two days ago. <laughs> I want to know how much of a difference these two uh, things, so getting married, having a daughter, how much has that had an impact on you as a person and also as a fighter? Uh, nothing changed, but I just want to, after the fight, next day go to the home because I don't see my family a couple months. And is your aim, if you beat Charles and become the champion, is it to equal Habib's defenses, or would you want to go one over him and beat the number? Again, again. If you win the title, would you want to equal Habib's title defenses, or do you want to do better and more title defenses than Habib? What's your aim? I want to do more title defense and jump to the other division. And just finally, I've seen a lot of videos of you guys playing football as well, so I just wanted to know, are you guys more competitive when it comes to playing football or more competitive when it comes to MMA? With Habib? All of you guys, you and Habib. Uh, we, we always play some basketball and uh, soccer, but uh, Habib know more about soccer, but he's a not good player. Right now he is so heavy and my team always beat him. So you're a better footballer than Habib then, yeah? Of course. <laughs> Thank you very much. He's now right here. Next to, right uh -huh. next to you. Sorry. Uh -huh. um, you and your team or friends and most of you guys grew up together in the same roof with the same coach. Do you feel like that's the, that's the continue of the, of the legacy, of the great legacy of your team? I don't understand question. Um, I will repeat. You and your team and friends grew up in the same room, same room, same roof with the same coach together since childhood, and uh, you guys have a legacy in UFC. And do you feel like this is the continue of the of the great legacy of the team? Yes, we already have one belt in the UFC. Now it's Habib, my head coach, and uh, Saturday night it's. You know, it's going to be first UFC champion for his legacy. All right, next question. Uh, well. do, you, do you see this fight as a Brazilian school versus the Caucasian school in right. a wrestling and ground game? Do you see this fight as a Brazilian school against the Caucasian school? Brazilian wrestling school, I never hear uh -huh. something. The ground about. game. Uh, ground game? Yeah. Uh, you know, the always when I fight with some jiu-jitsu black belt guy, they try to do some. But I already beat many 
black belts and Habib's all his life beat many black belts. That's why we already know which sport better for MMA. Thank you. Islam, Thank you. I welcome you. Смотри, ты сказал, что э, впервые хочешь после боя залезть на клетку в знак победы, если мы надеемся, эта победа состоится. А почему? То есть, а почему ты раньше этого не делал? Ну, я именно хотел с поясом, из-за этого я раньше не делал. Ага, понятно. Смотри, э, на твой взгляд, какой сабмишен или какая позиция Оливейра чисто для твоего стиля наиболее опасна? Его сабмишен какой опасный? Да. Ну, он хорошо делает гильотину, удушающие. Я над этим работал. Mm -hmm. uh, вот uh, смотри, как, когда ты дрался с Дави Рамосом, у тебя была такая установка не лезть с ним в борьбу в первые uh, два раунда. Вот почему ты думаешь, что именно в поединке с Оливейрой можно лезть, так скажем, в борьбу уже с самого начала? Ну, Дэви Рамос был вообще абсолютно... Другой стилистический соперник у них. Я никогда не опасаюсь грэплинга, потому что я знаю мой уровень грэплинга. И Дэви Рамус был покороче, и я мог спокойно с ним держать его на дистанции, то, что я и делал весь бой. А почему ты так уверен, что именно в поединке с Оливейрой можно доминировать? Именно в парте? Ну, я не знаю, я сколько, всю жизнь борюсь, я не, у меня не было ни, никогда ни с каким джитсером или грэпплером проблем. Я много боролся с титулованными грэпплерами, даже намного лучше, кто Оливейры, и я никогда там дискомфорта не ощущал. Вот есть такое мнение распространенное, что у тебя будет преимущество именно в физической силе над Оливейрой. Что ты думаешь насчет этого мнения, и подстраиваешь ли ты свой геймплан вот именно под преимущество физики? Нет, такого плана у меня никогда не было, что я знаю. Пока ты это не почувствуешь, пока ты его не схватишь, это нельзя предугадать. В бою посмотрим, как что. Вот Оливейра сейчас только познал вкус жизни, то есть его зауважали, стали очень сильно любить в Бразилии, он себе особняк купил. Тебе не жалко вот человека такого, так скажем, Ну, я из-за этого и уважаю, что он пришел из такой тяжелой жизни, что... Не знаю, он там где-то в начале карьеры выживал, что его семья тоже как-то помогала ему. Он сейчас уже может поменять жизнь для всей своей семьи. За это я уважаю. И последнее от меня. Что тебе больше всего, так скажем, бесит на неделе боя, за исключением весогонки? Ну, уже, знаешь, не первый мой главный бой вечера, и уже я как-то привык, даже я сегодня сам, ну, с утра настраивался на такой тяжелый день, ну, уже последняя у меня осталась впереди тренировка, и уже все, я привык к этому. Вначале было тяжело, я даже менеджерам говорил, нельзя что-то урезать, что-то убрать, мне же надо вес гонять. Ну, вот я уже с командой хожу, как-то быстро все пролетает. Спасибо. Slum right here. Uh, you obviously follow all the fighters in lightweight division, but do you remember the day when you saw Oliveira fight and you thought, I might be fighting this guy at some point of my career? Honestly, after just when he take this belt, I just thinking about him because before he had many lose, many like hard fight and I never think this guy is going to be champion but right now everything is changing and now like last couple years I follow his career so Habib is going to be in your corner he as you said he's your head coach now but he's been in your corner throughout your whole career probably right like was there any fight when he wasn't in your corner and was it different for you No, he always my corner, and you know this is. Uh, they give me you no know, good energy when I have the guys who have like good experience in this sport, and coach have to. He have like big big experience in this because he have many champions. You know, they give me always good example. So who else is going to be in the corner? Coach Javier, Coach Habib, and who else? 
He's going to be my striking coach from the Russia, my brother Muslim, and uh, Habib and Javier. So how is it different? Like the one person is focusing on technical point, someone's giving you like, you know, emotional advice, it's like go for it. Like how do you see those three guys doing it? Um, I don't know. Always when the, I'm in the in the cage, I hear Habib because mm. he mm. no he good good give me good advice always. You know his guy and uh, they listen each other. You know they they don't go they don't say something like together or the mm. you know this uh, Habib and Javier. No, I think this is the best, best corner in the world because these both guys have good experience. So who is the most emotional of them? I think Habib, when some, some, somebody do some wrong things, he go crazy always. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. После боя с Джастином Гейджи Хабиб сказал, что акклиматизация чуть ли не ключевым, чуть ли, стала чуть ли не ключевым фактором в его победе, потому что он не до конца восстановился. Вот, да, в интервью Магомеду Исмаилу. А, как тебе кажется, Оливейра уже пришел в себя, потому что здесь очень тяжело дышать в uh, да, Они что же заранее приехали, думаю, Но, да. Не настолько заранее, насколько вы. Я не знаю, по-моему, и в Бразилии такой же. Влажный климат, как и здесь. Ну, они приехали за две недели, по-моему. Не знаю, как будет. Для меня уже это привычно, потому что я месяц уже в Дубае находился. И если не секрет, сколько килограмм осталось согнать еще? У меня где-то 5 килограмм осталось еще. Ну, четыре тренировки у нас, это 5 килограмм, да. Спасибо. Ислам. Вадим Тихомиров, Матч ТВ. Скажи, пожалуйста, вот история UFC знает много примеров, когда бывшие друзья потом становились соперниками. Джон Джонс, Рашат Эванс, Фрэнсис Нгану, Сирил Ган, Дилашоу Гарбранд. Мне кажется, это очень важно объяснить, а почему ваша дружба с Хабибом носит принципиально другой характер? Вы никогда не станете соперниками. Sorry, I ask is, uh, about fights between former friends uh, like uh, Rashad Evans and John Jones, uh, Cody Garbrandt and TJ Dillashaw. And I ask about uh, potentially fights between Islam and Habib. На русском же будет. Если можно, да. Ну, смотри, у них на каких-то интересах дружба связана. Это не... не... Нас, нас соединяет вообще другое. У них там, они во всем какая-то выгода, и в конце у них становится вражда. А если ты как мусульманин и относишься к своему брату, как к своему, как любишь его как брата мусульманина, то всегда у нас бывает до конца теплые отношения. Даже в этом, если ты Други ищешь какую-то выгоду, там какую-то что-то там, где может с ним быть хорошо, то это в конце заканчивается враждой. Но если у тебя искренние отношения, то, то такая связь не рушится. И Хабиб искренне обрадуется, если ты, например, обойдешь его по количеству защит титула. Я думаю, сто процентов. Последний вопрос от меня, если можно. Как ты думаешь, что должно в вашем бою случиться, чтобы был реванш в Бразилии между тобой и Чарльзом Оливейрой? Это должны быть пять раундов, должны быть обоюдные нокдауны. Вот как, как бы ты ответил? Ну, если будет такой... Не знаю, уже Дана Уайт сказал, что Волконовский следующий, он будет драться за пояс. Ну, я знаю, много. Четвертый раз сейчас для фигуре, да, они дерутся. Должен быть такой близкий бой, чтобы так получилось. Спасибо. Islam. Islam, one here. question. Can I? Yes, here. Yes, okay. Yes. Can I? Yes. So you said about Gamrot, Mateusz Gamrot. So one question about him, because it's not a secret that he has a big respect for you and the fight, future fight maybe, with you. It is a dream fight for Gamrot. So what do you think about uh, Mateusz and his skills? Mateusz is good. I... I remember, I remind when they signed him and I, before he came to UFC, I know this guy and uh, I saw his couple fights. He's a uh, good and he's a uh, bad match for the other guys because this guy have good wrestling skills. Always, 
all these guys who have good wrestling skills, they all fighters have problem. Thank you. Islam, мне сказали, что последний вопрос, поэтому я тебе на английском и на русском задам привет. Как ты думаешь, если бы Абдулманап Магомедович был бы здесь перед твоим боем, какой бы совет бы он тебе дал? И на английском я тебе спрошу. What advice would Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov give you if he will be there? Ну, я скажу так, что мы даже сейчас на тренировках эти подсказки, эти там, как тренируемся, вообще весь тренировочный процесс сидели и без хаиба обсуждали с, с пацанами. И мы пришли к тому, что то же самое, вот как я этот яблоко от яблони далеко не падает, и у него все так же, и вот эти все, вот как он нас гоняет сейчас в зале, откуда это перешло, даже всем понятно. Я думаю, что у Хайба хорошо получается заменять отца, но с ним было бы намного проще. Спасибо. Thank you, guys. Thank you.